Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, we're going to check out the EXA command. And if you have never heard of the EXA command, it's a modern replacement for the LS command written in the REST programming language. And this command has a lot of cool features that modernize the output that you typically see from the old LS command. It uses colors to distinguish file types and metadata, and it also recognizes symbolic links, extended attributes, and it has Git integration. So what I'm going to do is show you guys how to install EXA on a few different distributions, then walk you guys through some examples. Let's get to it. Now first, let's start with a quick comparison between the ls command and the exa command. ls is a basic command that lists the contents of a directory. However, it has limited features and doesn't provide much information about files and directories. On the other hand, exa is a modern and feature-rich command that provides a lot of information about the files and directories, including file size, modification times, and permissions. Now, of course, you can get the ls command to provide this same information, but exa also has better formatting and colorized output by default, and that makes it easier to read and understand the directory structure. And what really stands out is the tree command being built into the actual exa command. Now, let's move on to installing exa on your Linux distribution. All right, so the installation process is pretty straightforward and can be done using the package manager. Now I'm connected to two different servers. I wanted to show you guys how to get it installed on Ubuntu as well as Fedora. And the package name is EXA and it's the same across the board on pretty much all Linux distributions because this package is included in most repositories. So let's start off by installing it on Ubuntu. And like I said, you can use the built-in package manager. And the first thing you wanna do is obviously update the system. That way it can refresh that repository or index of the packages. And so sudo apt update and press enter and type in our sudo password and connect out to Ubuntu servers and refresh that list. Now let's go down and install and all we have to do is type sudo apt install and exa that's the package name press enter and it'll go through it'll download any necessary dependencies and then get it installed and that's pretty much it for Ubuntu now let's step over to Fedora and do exact the exact same thing so let's go down and update the system so sudo dnf and then I always run the update or upgrade command. Either one will work, but I'm gonna just run update just so it can go through, see if it needs any uh, updates or dependencies or anything for the system. Now let's go down and install exe. And let's type sudo dnf install uh, exe and press enter. It'll go out and look for that package. As you can see, it found it. And with Fedora, you have to type uh, Y here. I mean, it's the same thing on Ubuntu, but uh, Fedora, the response is a lowercase Y, so make sure you do that and press enter. It'll go through, download the package, install any uh, dependencies, which it doesn't really need any dependencies at all. Uh, but now it's installed. And like I said, that name is the same across the board on pretty much most Linux distributions that I've seen and tried this package on. Now let's check out where the application was installed. We can run a command called which and then exa and that'll give us where the binary is located. And as you can see, it's, it's stored in user bin and then exe, that's the binary. And then we can switch back over to our Ubuntu server and run the which command as well and see where it's located. And it's located on the user bin uh, etsy. Now one thing you can do is move the binary to user local bin and that'll make it available globally uh, throughout the system. So any account that's created, it can use the exe command. It'll be available for any account on the system. But I'll leave that up to you guys. I won't go through the process. It's simply just moving that binary to the other location and that'll make it available. 
Now let's go down and clear the screen so I can show you guys some examples. Now with most applications that are installed on Linux, they come with a man page. And this is essentially the manual for the application or tool that you're trying to use within the command line. And this is a great reference for you to get a better understanding of how to use the command. And so I want to show you guys how to open that up right fast. And mainly all you have to do is type man and then exa and press enter. And what it'll do is it'll give you a description of the command as well as all the options that are available to you within that command. And you can scroll down, you know, check out those options. And like I said, it's a great reference, uh, especially if you're learning a new command. So let's go on and quit it and get to a few examples. All right, since I don't have much files on this system, it's a brand new uh, Ubuntu server. Let's go down and uh, get some files from a Git repository. And I basically found some training material that I want to use for this example. And so basically, I'm going to clone this repository down to my home directory, which I'm currently in my home directory. So uh, print working directory, and I'm in home Josh. So all we have to do is type git clone and then let's paste the link in here uh, and it's going on press enter and like I said this is just a bunch of training material uh, it'll give me a bunch of directories just to work with within my home directory so I don't have to go playing around with system files and uh, I also want to show you guys the git integration of exa as well and so this is a great opportunity to do that now let's go down and clear and let's exa this directory and what I'm gonna do is move into that directory as well so let's go change directories to the training uh, materials directory and now let's run exa so I can give you guys a better look at what's displayed by exa so let's press enter and boom as you can see the colorization is a whole lot better. It looks a whole lot better than the ls command, uh, especially with that colorization. You can see things a little bit better in my opinion. Now, similar to the ls command, there is the l option, which is basically for a long listing. And this gives you more information about those files. So let's type exa and then dash l, press enter. And as you can see, it breaks everything out for you. Uh, just like LS, it shows you the permissions, it shows you the file sizes, the owner, as well as the med modification dates, and also the files right there listed, you know, colorized like that. Now, let me show you guys another option that you can add in there. So let's go EXA and then dash LH. Now, H is typically used for a human readable, but by default, the exa command it puts everything in human readable format and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about uh, typically when you run the ls command it'll put things in bytes by default and so it'll put the full number out there in bytes but exa automatically puts it in human readable form so if you have a file in there that's say a gig or something it won't put it in a bytes format it'll automatically put it in a gigabytes format so the H has been made available to use for other options and as you can see right here uh, in our first uh, use using the long formatting there is no header and so H is mainly used for the header and so let's press enter and you'll see what I'm talking about it actually puts a header in there so you got your permissions you got your size you got your user uh, date modified as well as the name so in case you need to know what each one of these columns are for uh, you could drop that H in there it'll give you the headers for each column and you're good to go and there's also another option let's go on and put it in there L A H uh, A is for all it'll show uh, dot files or hidden files on the system or within the directory so let's press enter that way you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about but it'll show you guys hidden files and as you can see you got your git files right there now let's switch over to Fedora and run a few of these commands and I already have that training directory on here so let's go into it right fast uh, I just ran exa against it let's actually cd to it right fast and let's run the exa command again and then also just showing you guys that it'll work basically the same on all platforms so exa dash l and then also 
exit dash LH and then that gives, gives us a, those headers and then also let's uh, put A in there to show those hidden directories as well so we can check those out as well and then this might be a good time for me to show you guys the get option so if we run this same command uh, and then let's put tag tag uh, gets on the end of it and you'll see another column pop up that basically shows you the status of the files when it comes to git and let's press enter so i can show you guys right fast but boom there's that column it says git and basically it'll show you the status of those files so like i said it does have that integration with git so let's say you want to replace exa with the ls command you only want to look at exa where you can create what they call an alias on linux and this can be accomplished by modifying your bash or c file and so let's cd back to our home directory and then run nano and we want to look within our home directory so i'm gonna put periods and then forward slash and we're looking for our hidden file that's called bash rc so it's a hidden file it always has a period in front of it so periods and then bash and then rc and press enter and I'll bring up our bash rc file and all we have to do is go down to the bottom and we can add us a alias and I always um, I sometimes put notes in here uh, if you want to put notes you can but you can comment out a line by using the hashtag uh, and then I'll put something like custom alias and press enter and then let's add our alias and let's go alias and then let's set the name for our alias so what we want to type in the terminal each time this command is ran uh, and what it actually means so let's put the quotes in here and then let's type out our command so exa and then let's use that dash l h and then also let's throw in the git option as well so we'll always use git in there and let's go down and exit out uh, and save make sure we save uh, modify buffer press enter boom now let's go down and refresh our bash rc file or refresh our connection um, all we have to do is type source and there's multiple ways to do it i'm gonna just use the tilde which represents the home directory as well uh, forward slash and then dot bash rc and press enter and that will load the source so now we can use our alias and the alias that we set was l and that should run that command for us and let's cd back into this training uh materials directory and then run l boom and that'll run it using the lah option as well as the git option as well all right let me show you guys one more thing right fast using the exa command and that is the incorporation of tree now we can use this alias so I'll just type L and then also I want to add some more options to it so dash dash tree and that's the option that will pop up on the end after the command that we set in the alias and it'll basically run the tree command in tandem with it and I'll show you guys uh, the results when we look at it so let's scroll back up to the top so you guys can see but it will store it at the top of this directory uh, and sorry it's kind of <laughs> you know a long ways up but it goes through each one of the directories within this one directory to show you all the files underneath it and give you the information for each one of them and so that's a dope feature of exa as well uh and way man this thing is way up there it's like a whole bunch of files in this directory but yeah here we there we go so starting at the top so that's agenda that's the first directory within there and so it's looking at the current working directory which is that training directory so you basically it basically goes through everything and it goes all the way down the tree of the file structure all right so we hope that you found the information in this video helpful in improving your productivity and workflow when working with files and directories on your Linux system. By replacing the traditional ls command with exa, you can enjoy a modern and powerful tool that offers more features and flexibility. With this improved color coding, better support for Unicode files, and detailed filed information, exa can help you work more efficiently and effectively. As always, 
Thank you so much for watching and please like, share and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any more questions, please check out the Linode community site and the link will be down in the description of the video. See you guys in the next one.